Good morning, everyone. This morning's service is the service of morning prayer, beginning on page six of the Book of Common Prayer, and it's morning prayer for Thursday, the fifth week of Lent. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us pray. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hand prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O that you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in that day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The hymn chosen for this morning's service is hymn number three, uh, 830, 830. Sing, my tongue, the glorious battle. Sing, alas, the dread of fray. O'er the cross, the victor's trophy. Sound a high for triumphal lay. How the pains of death enduring, Earth's Redeemer won the day. He, our Maker, deeply grieving, That the first made Adam fell, When he ate the fruit forbidden, Whose reward was death and hell. Mark in them this tree, the ruin of the first tree to dispel. Thus the work for our salvation he ordained to be done. To the traitor's art opposing, art yet deeper than his own. Thence the remedy pure curing, whence the fatal wound begun. Therefore, when at length the fullness of the appointed time was come, he was sent the world's creator from the Father's heavenly throne and was found in human fashion, offspring of the virgin's womb. Lo, he lies in infants weeping, where the narrow manger stands, while the mother made his members, wrapped in mean and lowly bands. And the swaddling clothes in winding round his helpless feet and hands. To the Trinity be glory, 
everlasting as is meet, equal to the Father, equal to the Son and Paraclete, trino unity whose praises all created things repeat. Our psalm appointed for this morning's service is Psalm 107, part 1, found on page 471. Psalm 107, part 1, found on page 471. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endureth forever. Let them give thanks whom the Lord hath redeemed, and delivered from adversity, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. They that wandered in the wilderness, even in the desert place, found no way to, uh, to a city where men dwelt. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. So they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them forth by the right way, they that, that they might go to a city where men dwelt. Oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men. For he satisfieth the empty soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. That they sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, were fast bound in misery and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God, and lightly regarded the counsel of the Most High. He also brought down their heart with hard labor. They fell down, and there was none to help them. So they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bonds in sunder. O oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass, and smitten the bars of iron in sunder. They that are foolish are afflicted for their offense, and because of their wickedness. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat, and they were even hard at death's door. So they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent his word and healed them, and saved them from their destruction. O oh, then men that would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men, that they would offer unto him the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and tell, uh, tell out his works with gladness. They that go down to the sea in ships, and occupy their business on the great waters. These men see the works of the Lord, and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind ariseth, which lifteth up the waves thereof. 
they are carried up to the heaven and down again to the deep. Their soul melteth away because of the trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and at their, and at their wit's end. So they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. For he maketh the storm to cease, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they are at rest. And so he bringeth them out into the haven where they would, they would be. O oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men, that they would exalt him also in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is written in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eleb, and on the sons of Peath, the sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with a number of people of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation, chosen from the assembly, well-known men. And they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said to them, You have gone too far, for all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? When Moses heard it, he fell on his face, and he said to Korah and all his company, In the morning the Lord will show who is his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near to him. Him whom he will choose, he will cause to come near to him. Do this, take censers, Korah, and all his company. Put fire in them, and put incense upon them before the Lord tomorrow. And the man whose the Lord chooses shall be the Holy One. You have gone too far, sons of Levi. And Moses said to Korah, Hear now, the sons of Levi. It is too small a thing for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do, to do service in the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister to them, and that he has brought you near him, and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you. And with you, and would you seek the priesthood also? Therefore it is against the Lord that you and all your company have gathered together. What is Aaron that you murmur against him? And Moses said, to call Dathan and Abram and the sons of the Elab. And they said, we will not come up. It is a small thing that you have brought up us, brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness that you must also make yourself a prince over us. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey nor given the inheritance of fields and vineyards, you will put out the eyes of these men. We will not come up. 
And Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, Do not respect their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, and I have not harmed one of them. And Moses said to Korah, Be present, you and all your company, before the Lord, you and they and Aaron tomorrow, and let every one of you take his censer and put incense upon it, and every one of you bring before the Lord his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, you also and Aaron each his censer. So every man took the, his censer and they put fire in them and laid incense upon them. And they stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. And Korah assembled all the congregation against them at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the Spirit of all flesh, shall one man sin? Wilt thou be angry with all the congregation? And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the congregation, Get away from about the dwelling of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. Then Moses rose and went to Dathan and Abram, and to elders of Israel followed him. And he said to the congregation, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be swept away with all their sins. So they got away from the about the dwelling of Korah and Dathan and Abram. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood at the door of their tents together with their wives and their sons and their little ones. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, and that it was not been of my own accord. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they are visited by the fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates something new, and the ground opens in its, its mouth, and swallows them up with all that he belong, that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall know that the, these men have des despised the Lord. And as he finished speaking all these words, the ground under them did under them split asunder, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men that belonged to Korah and all their goods. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. And all Israel were round about them, fled to their cry, with, at their cry. For they said, Lest the earth swallow us up. And the fire came forth from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men offering the incense. Here endeth the first lesson. Continuing now on the bottom of page seven with the Dedeum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. 
we believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Our second lesson is written in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragments of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a, cheap, was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus also to death, because out on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The next day, a great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on an ass, sitting on an ass's colt. But his disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, they, then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he, when he crawled Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. And the Pharisees then said to one another, you see that you can do nothing? Look, the world has gone after him. Here end the second lesson. Continuing now with the Benedictus on page 9. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the oath, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, that we, being delivered of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, 
through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his our Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, who didst raise up thy faithful servant, Thomas Ken, to be a bishop in thy church, and to feed thy flock, we beseech thee to send down upon all thy bishops, the pastors of thy church, the abundant gift of thy Holy Spirit, that they may be, that, that they, being endued with the power from on high, and ever walking in the footsteps of thy holy apostles, may minister before thee in the household as true servants of Christ and stewards of thy divine mysteries. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord and knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty, everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name, and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, 
that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and the unity of spirit and the bond of peace and the righteousness of life. Finally, commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their suffering and happy issue out of all of their afflictions. This we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us a due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be infinitely thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness, holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom within the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.